dynamic range. As photographers, we always want more. And this is most noticeable when you're photographing in a super high contrast environment, like for example, sunrise or sunset, where we can't expose for the ground and the sky at the same time, and we're all limited by our camera's dynamic range. Or are we? In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can dramatically increase the dynamic range of your photo in Lightroom. And I'm gonna start right now. So let me explain what you need for this to work before we go ahead and jump onto Lightroom. And the technique we're gonna be using is called exposure stacking. This is the process of taking multiple photos at different exposures. Usually you'd need three for this, but today I'm actually going to be exposure stacking five images. And this process of this is basically taking one photo underexposed, one correctly exposed, and then one overexposed. And what we're gonna be doing is taking all three of these photos, or in my case, all five of these photos, and merging them into one photo, dramatically increasing the dynamic range. So these are the five photos we're going to be photo merging. And what I've done is I've taken, if we go ahead and zoom into this one here, this is our two stops under, one stop under, correctly exposed, one stop over, and two stops over. Now you can go even more extreme and maybe have 10 photos if you wanted to, but I find to get the best results and to not end up with too many photos, five is a good example. You can do it with three, one stop under, correctly exposed, and one stop over, but to add a little bit more information in both the highlights and shadows, then I do recommend using five photos. Okay, so once you've chosen the five photos that you've selected, what we're gonna do is go ahead and select them all by holding down shift, then right click on that image, and what we're gonna do is drop down to photo merge. And this is where you can also create a panorama if that's something you're interested in. But today, we're just focusing on a HDR image. And what it'll do is it'll pop up with this dialog box. And we've got a couple settings that we can change inside Lightroom. So the first one here you've got is auto align. This makes sure that basically all your photos are aligned successfully. If maybe you weren't shooting on a tripod and you were handheld and you were doing it quickly, ever so slight movements in that photo might change the overall outcome. You may end up with a few, some ghosting issues and some semi-transparent pixels in your photo, which is something you do want to avoid. So I do recommend using a tripod as well as making sure auto align is selected. Now below that, you've also got auto settings. And we go ahead and turn that on. You can see roughly what you'll end up with. This is Lightroom basically working out the settings and trying coming up with a good outcome. I must say, this looks pretty good, so I might actually leave this on in this example. And then lastly, you've got your de-ghosting amount. Now this really helps if you have any moving objects within your scene. Again, you're taking five photos, there might be a, maybe a couple seconds in between each frame, which means objects can move within your images, creating, again, semi-transparent pixels or ghosting, where it looks like there's a car in one frame and it looks like it's disappearing in the next frame. So if it moves, so if you've got any movement within your scene, make sure you've got de-ghosting amount turned on. You've got four different amounts from none all the way to high. You can even show de-ghosting overlay to where these artifacts are appearing to actually check. But in most, most examples like mine, there isn't. You can see actually, if we go ahead and zoom in, the plane moved through the photo. So actually I might actually remove that in post, but it hasn't actually appeared in my de-ghosting amount because it's such a small part of the image. But if you do have ghosting, make sure that is turned on. And the last thing we need to do is go ahead and simply click merge. But as you can see, it's done it really quickly. And what it'll do is it will spit out an, an extra image. So as you can see, I've now got a sixth image within my collection, and this is our HDR photo. So if I go to my develop panel, we can see we've now got way more information in the highlights and shadows than previously. So what I can actually do is compare it. This is our normal image versus our HDR image. So if I bring up that information and try and match it, you can see this is our normal image, and this is our HDR image way more information in the highlights and shadows thanks to that photo merge. So if you're in a sunrise or sunset situation and you're just not getting enough dynamic range in the highlights and shadows, highly recommend photo merging. And after a couple of tweaks, here is the before and here is the after. So as you can see, creating a HDR or high dynamic range image is really easy. All you'll need to remember is to exposure stack your photos, making sure you've got lots of photos under, correctly, and overexposed, then simply merging them together in Lightroom. So the next time you're shooting at sunrise or sunset and you're struggling to get the right amount of dynamic range to expose for the highlights and shadows, remember to exposure stack your image and then merge them in Lightroom to create an amazing HDR photo. 
I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time.